I come around the corner, come down here, and the whole place was just in flame. The, the, there was red smoke, there was black smoke. The whole street was crowded. So I fainted there in the street. It's been a year since a roaring fire tore through this Maple Street apartment building, trapping and killing a young man and his two small children. Two of them were. 56 Maple Street was also home to Mary Roy and her three sons. Now she imagines family pictures, her children's toys, and life as she knew it, bulldozed and buried in this now vacant lot. I went to grab my grandparents' pictures, looking for things, and, and it's, I tell friends, yeah, just a minute, I'll go get it, and I don't have it no more. But what she does still have is her children. And for that, she knows she's lucky. And my 13-year-old was down on Lincoln Street, and two of them were here. And when I left, they were in the apartment. So when they said that, I couldn't find them. I thought they were in the building. Investigators say the fire started when a tenant carelessly threw a cigarette into a trash bag. But the building also had a long list of code violations, including no working smoke alarms and blocked exits. The manager, Jeffrey Higgins, was in the process of buying the building from pawn shop owner Norman Russo when it burned. The Attorney General's office is now seeking a manslaughter indictment against Russo in connection with the blaze. Higgins is also being investigated for his role. Moved in one of his After the fire, Mary Roy and her family moved into another building owned by Jeff Higgins. They didn't stay long. I was on the third floor and there was no fire escape. It was none besides jump. In fact, Higgins had a court date Wednesday for failing to correct fire code violations at 170 Blake Street. He didn't show up. He also didn't show up for an interview we scheduled with him, but one of his tenants showed us problems in his apartment, which is right across the street from where the fire happened. Malfunctioning light switches. A hole in the wall where a smoke detector belongs. Uh, it's not an easy job. While Lewiston Code Enforcement Director Gil Arsenault says Higgins is still one of their problem landlords, many other building owners have become more conscientious since the tragedy. I think the fire last year was a wake-up call. I think a lot of landlords, good landlords, resp responsible landlords, really saw the value in making sure that their smoke detection units were up and running. And for the first time in about a decade, says Deputy Chief Jim Morin, this year, the Lewiston Fire Department also took landlords to court for code violations. Once they, we've given the time, we go back to reinspect, which we do reinspect, it's very important to follow up. If we find that it has not been corrected, home to court to get it done. This light here is short now. In fact, after last year's tragedy, the city announced big changes in the way it would enforce fire prevention in its 1,400 apartment units. Now, landlords have 30 days to fix those violations or pay fines up to $2,500. <coughs> but officials say it isn't just the landlords who have to take responsibility for safety. Certainly the landlords and the tenants are the two primary groups, and they need to work together, and they both need to be responsible. And that's a message Mary Roy and her kids have gotten the hard way. My youngest one. He was going to go throw some firecrackers the other night. My oldest one was right there saying, be careful, you could start a fire. 